It's my joy now to introduce our second speaker, Bishop F, Bishop Ephraim Tendero, um, who I met for the first time in Manila last year uh, at a regional conference on creation care and the gospel for uh, Christian leaders from across Southeast Asia. Since that time, he's been appointed as Secretary General of the World Evangelical Alliance, uh, the nominal leader of 600 million evangelicals worldwide. And Bishop F, as he'll share, has a, a long uh, experience in issues of bringing faith to the table in terms of climate negotiation. Bishop F. Tendero. Thank you very much, uh, David. Good afternoon to everyone. It is my great joy to be with you this afternoon. And I have to cut back because I was prepared for 20, but now they said it's only 10 minutes. So uh, we have to make a change, right? <laughs> we are doing climate change. So I came to COP for two purposes. Uh, number one is to seek for climate justice. And number two is to advocate for the engagement of the religious sector at the, uh, on the um, conference of parties. Well, we already heard the, the re from the scientists that the mm -hmm. earth is warming. And this is the World Risk Index report. And you can see how our country, the Philippines, is number one in terms of uh, disaster prone for, for, uh, for, for uh, typhoon. And you can see here how China and the United States emit 40% of the world's total carbon emission. And uh, the top 10 countries emits about 67.2% of the carbon emission. So what is uh, all of this creates all of that uh, hurricane in the U.S., Forests in the USR, uh, drought in Australia, mudslide in China, flooding in Pakistan, heatwave in Europe, and you can say, yeah, Bloomberg says it's global warming. Uh, now, in the Philippines, we are visited by about 20 typhoons a year. 20 typhoons, 20 to 22 typhoons a year, and about five to six of them would be destructive, like Super Typhoon Haiyan, the strongest typhoon that hit this uh, this planet Earth. So uh, we say that uh, we are the first line of defense on typhoons. The typhoons develop in the Pacific Ocean, moves westwards, and the first line of defense is the Philippines. So we should ask the other countries to help us because we, we are giving them that defense against typhoon. Mm. Um, so we call that climate defense fund, right? <laughs> uh, now, the Philippines emits only point. 28% of the world's greenhouse gas emission. U.S. and Canada, 42%. And so climate justice is actually asking those big countries that are responsible for this global warming to take responsibility for the most vulnerable countries like us. When Typhoon Haiyan came, 6,500 of our people died in one day. 25,000 square kilometers were affected. Millions of homes were, were, were lost. How do we account for that? And therefore, climate justice, we need to make sure that here in COP21, we will really see that the big countries will reduce their carbon footprint and they will be willing also to fund for the, the, for the risk as well as the devastation of vulnerable countries like the Philippines and other coastline countries. The second <coughs> purpose I came here is to call for interfaith participation at the um, conference of parties. There are about 40,000 people, about 25,000 participants or party delegates from different 100, 150 countries, but how many of them are religious leaders? Well, they say, well, the religious, you can just pray. No, we need to be engaged more than in prayer because there's a moral dimension for climate change. That the basis for the decision to reduce carbon footprint is because of our desire for the preservation of human life. And that is a moral issue. Uh, the Pope Francis says, if we destroy creation, creation will destroy us. And therefore, it's important for us to look at the, um, the moral dimension. <coughs> Secondly, as religious leaders, we can help in the mobilization of communities. That the church, you know, Everyone, everywhere, people have some kind of expression of faith or non-faith. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the universal distribution of faith-based organizations or even, I would say, non-faith groups would have that kind of 
uh, moral ascendancy and moral suasion. Um, you know, people will listen more to their religious leader than their scientists. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, that's okay. Or to <laughs> the politicians in particular. Uh -huh. But the religious leader, when they speak, they can mobilize mm -hmm. people. And therefore, if we want to contribute, we want to help. Mm -hmm. Then the number three, the religious leaders are also harbinger of hope. Because we say, yeah, you know, people now have that distrust and suspicion because of the pain and the suffering that they have experienced. And then also, for these past 20 years, there are many unfulfilled commitments for these past 20 <coughs> years of um, interactions. Therefore, we come here saying that we can have hope. Let me share with you at least this model that I use, the four pillars that are needed for societal transformation. We need to have a four-legged chair, like all of you are sitting on a four-legged chair, or we have a four-legged table. We need to have the pillar of government, they have the laws and structure, then the NGO, they have the, uh, the knowledge as well as the, uh, the kind of <coughs> networking that they have. We need to have business because they have the capital, and then we need to have the religious because the religious would have the moral suasion as well as the moral ascendancy. We need to work together. Why not, you know, we, why relegate the religious on uh, outside? So, so we need to have that common vision to help the survival of humanity. And to do that, then we need to have both the government, religious, business, <coughs> and the NGO. Well, uh, let me share with you at least an example from the Philippines. I have initiated for the last five years or so interfaith dialogue on climate change where we in gather the religious the different multi-faith leaders together with the government, Climate Change Commission of the Philippines, Climate Change Congress of the Philippines, and the different uh, uh, religious leaders. The objectives of the dialogue inculcate environmental awareness, raise the moral issue on climate change, mobilize participation and action on climate change, enhance partnership and cooperation with government agencies and faith-based organization. And then uh, we actually have a one-day national dialogue and as well as regional level. Well, we have a plenary presentation on the, from the government, the moral basis for creation, scientific paper, uh, interventions by government agencies. So in one day, we make such presentation. Then we have open forum. And then we have workshop and action planning so that before the end of the day, people will come out with some actionable points that they will carry. <coughs> so, in terms of the uh, issues as well as commitments and actions of individuals and organizations. So, uh, we have done, in the, just this past year, we have done that in 11 regions in the Philippines. Partnership between the government. So, what was the result? <coughs> well, we have conducted two national dialogues under the office of the president, uh, 11 regional dialogues, we have established working groups at national and regional levels. Um, government agencies acted immediately on the concerns raised. So because we have there the people from the ground, grassroots, and other people, then there is immediate action. And then there is now the greater involvement of faith-based leaders as well as members. Well, there were some barriers, like government restriction for travel for non-government resource persons. Like here, I came here not because of government, I came here because uh, Tier Fund UK helped me to come here. Um, but uh, I'm glad the government allowed me to come here. Uh, well, political differences of government officials, that can be a problem also. Then the coordination with other faith-based groups who have divergent positions, even among evangelicals, we have that. And then we have that introvert diversity. However, we are able to overcome all of those barriers. Uh, what are some of the lessons learned? Well, we concentrate on agreement, we focus on common agenda, we generate support from each other, and we are proactive. What are some of our recommendations? The recommendations that I have here. Okay. Recommendations I have here. Encourage interfaith dialogue on climate change in different countries, collaboration of government, business, and NGOs. Uh, include interfaith leaders in the uh, cli conference of parties, and then engage the interfaith in fulfilling new and sustainable goals. <coughs> well, as I have prepared actually some examples of what happened in the Philippines in terms of the re results, actions, recommendations, but I will not take the time to discuss that. 
uh, tomorrow you can discuss, uh, share, uh, share with us. We have longer time. So, well, uh, so in different areas, we have actually actions, even in government laws, even in, uh, so this is a result of all of the different uh, interactions we have. Maybe it's time. Okay? So, uh, let me end. Uh, even so, even the, the clicker is giving up. <laughs> Use your finger. So, we have all of those recommendations from different areas. Now, let's go to the, uh, we say, you know, in this past year, we had about 1,500 bishops, religious leaders, representing Catholics, Evangelicals, Protestants, Muslim, Buddhists, and indigenous peoples in the Philippines, working together, saying we want to work together. Mm -hmm. What are some of the actions that we have done? Well, uh, during Typhoon, the relief assistance, and we tried to cooperate, housing project for those who were uh, helped, and then reforestation. Next year, uh, we are planning to plant more than a million trees next year, uh, uh, working together with all the different religions. And then saving rivers and watersheds, and having livelihood project, and also the disaster risk reduction and management training. And then we also have the advo advocacy and education. And then, this is good, Firefly Project. I have in, uh, approached the Asian Development Bank, if they can help fund that, that we will want to see a solar panel in every uh, churches. So that when the pastor preaches about uh, climate change, they say, we are using solar energy here. Mm -hmm. Or even in the, uh, in the different mosques, we want to see solar panels in the different mosques. Mm -hmm. Well, I, let, let me end by saying, you know, Jesus came that we may have life in its fullness. But we are destroying this life that God has given. Let me end by saying that Jesus and creation said, all things were created by him, through him, and for him. God bless you.